Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. It is Drew here from Lone Fox and today I'm filming my first ever video in the new apartment. Well, it's not my first ever video because I've done like the moving vlog and the empty apartment tour. This is the first video that I'm actually filming that's kind of like back to my usual schedule of content. I am filming a DIY video for you guys today, which I have missed DIYing so, so much. You don't even know. Like I have not created a project in a couple of weeks, honestly, because the whole process of packing and moving and unpacking and settling in is just kind of like, you know, it's a couple week process. Today I'm creating four super cute budget friendly room decor DIY ideas. And these are all projects that I actually had supplies for in my home. I did not go out and purchase any supplies. I didn't Amazon anything. Um, these just all came from my craft stash. So I hope that maybe some of these supplies you guys might have as well if you're an avid DIYer like myself. And quickly before jumping in, I just wanted to mention over on LoneFox.com, I am doing a buy one throw pillow and get one 50% off. So if you guys have been wanting to get some throw pillows, um, I basically sell the covers for the pillows. So it kind of cuts down the cost a little bit. You can cover old throw pillows or stuff them with a new um, like insert if you have one. Check it out. I'll link it in the description box for you guys. But let's go ahead and get started with today's projects. Oh my gosh, it feels so good to be doing a voiceover again. So for our first project, I'm gonna be creating a wooden round shelf from some 12 inch embroidery hoops. And I actually bought these for a different project a while back and I need the exteriors of the embroidery hoops. So I decided I'm going to use the interiors of the embroidery hoops for today's project. So I grabbed five embroidery hoops, again, 12 inches in uh, width. And what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be actually gluing all of these together using my Gorilla Glue hot glue, not sponsored at all, just my favorite hot glue ever. It works so well and it bonds everything perfectly it's honestly extremely hard to pull things off once they have fully dried and another thing I love about this hot glue is that it doesn't dry in like one second it actually takes like a minute or two so you have working time which is really really nice so that was definitely needed when I did these kind of like little circles of hot glue and then placed the next ring on we're wanting to create a width that is appropriate for something to kind of sit on a shelf base if that makes sense once we're done with that, I actually had this yardstick in my room and I've had this in there for so long. I bought it a long time ago, I believe for fabric and I just ended up never really using it. So I'm repurposing it into shelves for my shelving system. So how I'm doing this is I'm just measuring the width of the shelf that I wanna add and I'm using this little cutter here or saw, it's not a cutter. And I'm going to be basically cutting that down and I'm cutting two of them to be completely equal. That way I have one that's at the top and one that's at the bottom. So I'm tracing the next one on using the saw and just simply cutting this it's super super easy this wood is like a kind of like thicker balsa wood so it's pretty easy to cut through and then once you have both of those I actually went ahead and sanded the top and the bottom of each of these to get off all of those like ruler markings they're only printed on the top side so I was able to sand this off very easily it did make a little bit of a mess so keep that in mind maybe do it outside or on top of a surface you can easily dispose of and then I simply also went ahead and sanded the exterior and interior of my little shelf base I guess you could say. And now it is time to stain the piece, which is my favorite part. I used to never like staining, but I am obsessed with it now. So I'm using the early American stain from Varathane. It's one of my favorite ones. It creates such a pretty mid-century look. And these embroidery hoops, once you give them a light sanding, really soak in the stain nicely. So I went ahead and I applied one full coat of this just with a paper towel. Um, super simple and easy. And I did it on the interior as well. But something I will say is that the actual shelves, when you go to stain the shelves, which I'm going to do in just just a second here. They are a lot more porous than the embroidery hoops. The embroidery hoops almost have a finish on them. So the shelves really soak in the stain and kind of get it a little bit of a darker look a lot quicker. So I went ahead and I just added a second coat of that stain to the interior and exterior of that circle that we created. That way the tones of woods matched perfectly. And all you have to do is simply add some hot glue to the end of both of your shelf ends, place it in the little circle thingy. <laughs> that you created and you're going to add some additional glue just to hold it in place and that really finishes off your project all you have to do is put a nail in the wall hang it up and you're good to go i thought this was such a cute and easy yet affordable miniature shelf
All right, so this is the project any of us can do for sure. This is literally probably the fourth or fifth piece that I've ever painted in my life. I am not a painter, so this is super simple and it was also extremely fun. So I grabbed an 11 by 14 canvas and I just gave it a coat of the a tan paint. I kind of wanted to use these very retro colors and I went off this inspo image, which I will link below from Pinterest that I found. And I kind of wanted to create like a version of this with some retro colors. So I mixed up some reds, yellows, oranges, and like peach toned colors just basically very warm hues that I thought would look kind of complementary with each other and I also added in a pink in there and I started off at the bottom I'm creating my first layer here which is gonna be the lowest edge of what could be mountains or sunset whatever you want it to be basically and what I suggest doing is kind of painting your line first and then using a super precise brush to just get that line super crisp so you're gonna want that edge to look nice and crispy and it just takes like patience honestly you're also gonna want to get those sides so when when you move into your next one this is just very organic which i love there's no rhyme or reason to this i'm using again like a super tiny brush just to make that edge super precise so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to basically fill in this section and something else that's nice is you can kind of clean up your layer underneath using your paint for the layer above so as you can see here i kind of went in and just very delicately painted on top of there and then filled it in completely with that orange color The process is really repetitive from here. So next I went in with kind of like a golden sunflower tone and I'm adding in my third layer. Again, just going in and just brushing on very carefully and just making sure that I'm making my line very, very crisp. That is just the key thing to make this look very, very nice. And I've said very, very 800 times. You guys know what I mean. <laughs> I just want this to look pretty, you know? So I'm going in and just taking my time and creating a nice crispy line, if you will, along that edge. I'll just let you guys watch this because it's kind of satisfying and I think you guys understand exactly what I'm doing. All right, I wasn't gone for long, I'm back now. Basically, I used this cork lid from a canister and I'm just creating a circle shape for the sun and just doing the same thing using a bright orange color just to fill in that sun. Just take your time. I kind of messed up the sun, but I was able to fix it. And always keep in mind, if you mess it up a lot, you can just take your tan color that was the base and fix it. But once you are completely done, allow it to dry. And this is your finished canvas. Also something exciting is I turned this one into an art print over on my website. So I will link it below for you guys if you would like to purchase a print. They're so cute and I think they're gonna add a nice pop to any room. Moving right into project number three, I'm gonna be using some clay and a glass container. So I grabbed three equal chunks of the clay and I'm going to be rolling out some tubes of this clay, about a quarter inch wide, and I'm wanting them about 14 inches long, but this is gonna definitely vary based off the canister you guys are gonna be wrapping this around. So you're gonna see what I'm talking about in a second. But for me, I needed about 14 inch long by a quarter inch wide tubes of clay because we're gonna be braiding these. So you're gonna connect all three at the top and just do a very, very simple braid. I don't even know how to verbally explain how to do a braid so I feel like if you don't know how to do one it might be best to either watch what I'm doing or search a braid tutorial because it's literally right over middle left over middle right over middle I think I just did it honestly it's right over middle left over middle right over middle left over middle once you have that done you're going to start wrapping it around your canister from the bottom so all I did for this was I kind of pressed it on there and then I just tweezed off or pulled off any excess clay and kind of mashed it on to my container now this was actually a Palo Santo holder container from CB2 and I just had it sitting in my craft stash, so I decided to use it. And I decided to create a full on like braided vessel. So how I did this was I just started it in the backside again, where we kind of had that seam, cause you're gonna have a seam sadly, but it's just put it on the backside and no one will know. So I did a total of four of these braids that wrapped all the way around. And once you start connecting them, they actually look like they are fully woven together. And it is such a pretty like organic yet textured effect. Like I just love the way that this looks. This 
is what the finished vessel looks like and all you need to do is pop it in the oven and bake it per your clay's instructions and that finishes off your super cute little plant holder or vase whatever you want this to be the last project I was inspired by these anthropology wall hangings I just love these but they are so expensive so I was like let's make our own version for a lot less so basically I had a lot of the supplies already I started off with a six inch and a ten inch brass ring and I also used this dowel here but what I'm gonna start off by doing is actually using a very fine silver wire this is a 26 gauge floral wire you can find it in like the floral section and I'm gonna be wrapping the smaller ring and I'm only gonna be wrapping half of the ring I essentially want to give this like a nice contrasting metal mixed metal look if that makes sense and next what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my dowel and I'm going to be wiring this on to the ring so this is kind of hard to explain but I'm just going back and forth and kind of creating x shapes to wire the dowel down to the ring We also want to add our larger ring so we're going to be wiring that to the outside just kind of keep everything nice and even it's a bit challenging to hold but once you get it down and wired and fixed into place it's totally fine so just wire those sections create really strong joints and then i'm going to be using this small little circle here as a hanger at the top this is totally optional but i thought it added a little element and i'm going to be using the wire as well to fasten this up at the top there and i just love the way the silver wire really kind of contrasts with the brass and creates this mixed metal almost handmade like found object vibe i really love that vibe that it gives off I grabbed my yarn, which is like a really thick roving yarn. I love this yarn here. I'll link it below. It's from Amazon. And I went ahead and I cut, I believe, six one yard sections of this yarn. And I'm going to be doing one yard sections on the bottom here. And then I'm unraveling some pieces, not all of them at all. And I also decided to add some wooden beads just to add a little bit more interest. And I just kind of just randomly placed these. I had no kind of like instruction manual for this. I just placed them wherever I wanted and just went with the flow of it. I just love the way that you can really create your own piece with this. And I added the beads just to add a little bit of texture and bring back a little bit of warmth as well. And this yarn was also a really nice kind of like oatmeal tone, which I loved. And I just think the beads added such a fun element. And then I also added some smaller pieces of yarn to that second ring and this really finishes it off just add your beads as you think look necessary and just split up the yarns if you need to and that finishes off your wall hanging So those were my projects today. I hope that you guys enjoyed that video. I actually ended up loving every single project so, so much. They were really fun to create as well. I think they were just a little bit more fun than normal because I hadn't done it in like three or four weeks. So just felt good to get back into creating and crafting. Um, and I'm just really excited that I was able to create those projects. And if you guys would like to check out the art print of the little like scenery that I painted today, I'm going to have that linked below so you can check that out if you're curious. That's really all. I hope that this inspired you guys a little bit to create some projects, maybe with some items you might have around your your home and I'm not going to keep you here for much longer so if you're not already make sure to subscribe to my channel I post brand new home decor and DIY content every single week and you could follow me over on Instagram at Lone Fox Home for more behind the scenes type of stuff I post there every single day catch me there um, anyways guys I will catch you all my next one have an amazing rest of your day and stay safe bye guys mm -hmm.